begin our conversations this morning in Ghana. A new expose by Ghanaian investigative journalist Anas Aremayao Anas is creating buzz in Ghana. The expose which throws light on the Galamsey economy, otherwise known as illegal small-scale economy, has been described by one of Ghana's private legal practitioners known as Ni Pakbo Samwa as an entrapment. Now, Ghana's president Anna Kufuado has also terminated the appointment of the Minister of State at the Finance Ministry, Charles Edu Boahe, in a connection, of course, with the investigative piece. We have a video I want you to take a look at, and after that, we'll be speaking with our guest. 2012, presidential candidate Akufuado was asked how he would tackle corruption, and as answer cause a stare. He would use the ANAS principle, he said. Setting up highly motivated professional groups of young people who will work undercover to unearth examples of corruption wherever they can find it. What I call the ANAS principle. Kufuado would go on to lose the 2012 election, resulting in a Supreme Court petition, which he eventually also lost. <laughs> The Supreme Court of our nation has spoken. The result of the December 2012 presidential election, whilst I disagree with the court's decision, I accept it. After two failed attempts in 2008 and 2012. Today, this year, the lowest rate of growth in our history in the last 22 years under the watch of Mahama. And he is saying with these statistics that we should give him another chance. We are not going to give him another four years. 2016 would finally turn out to be the year for a Kufuado. Aye. Aye. Well, a lot's going on in the Ghanaian political space in line with this expose, and that's why we had to bring you that video, because Nana Kufado has been talked about, especially fingered in this situation. Well, joining us now uh, to shed more light all the way from Ghana is journalist and political editor Wilberforce Sassari. Thanks so much for being here. Uh, let's go straight into it. Now, what do we know about uh, this expose? We would like you to please uh, kindly break it down into a simple explanation, especially for our viewers. Right, so uh, there is this phenomenon in Ghana called Galamse. And Galamse is essentially illegal mining, where there are small groups of people who engage in mining in places where there are minerals without license. And so with the expose named Galamse economy, a lot of people were expecting the unearthing of certain activities in line with illegal mining in our country. However, it turns out that the latest expose by Anas Aramiao Anas, which is named Galamse Economy, had nothing to do with Galamse, but had everything to do with the finance minister or the finance ministry. And perhaps that is the reason why he named it Galamse Economy, having something to do with the Ghanaian economy. In simple terms, Anas Aramiya, Anas and his Tiger IPI team went to the Ministry of Finance through an officer who works there at the External Mobilizations Department. And they set up the Minister of State at the Finance Ministry, indicating that there was a certain uh, businessman who lives in Bahrain who is interested in establishing a $500 million bank in Ghana. And so out of that position, they invited the Minister of State and the Finance Ministry, Charles Idubwahin, to come to Dubai to meet this alleged businessman who, who owns a, a bank or who has a lot of money and he wants to invest it in a bank in the country. When the Minister of State arrived in Dubai, they had a discussion and after the discussion, they gave him some money uh, for purposes of shopping. Now, all of this was recorded, and that is what constituted the report that was aired in Ghana entitled Galamsey Economy. It led to the termination of the appointment of the Minister of State and the Finance Ministry. And again, to establish that these same people also had a meeting with the substantive finance minister, Kero Furiata, who is directly related to the sitting president, it's his cousin. Now, in that meeting, also in Dubai, the finance minister was not enthused when the people offered him money because he felt that 
there was no need for exchange of money because they had come to discuss a potential business opportunity for the country. So he rejected the money angrily uh, and left Dubai because he was on his way to Japan. However, Anas Aremi Anas and his people did not show that aspect of the video where the finance minister rejected his offer. And that is what has led to a lot of discussion in our country because those details have been put out, especially by me, because of reports that I had and interviews that I've done. And it's generating argument because, first of all, people felt that Anas Aremi Anas, who has done some very good work in the past, has resorted to entrapping people with juicy deals in order to find them corrupt. And then also he refused to show people that he engaged and did not um, fall to his uh, models of running. He has refused to publicize that as well, uh, but decided to put out those that failed his test. But for those who passed his test, he has refused to put the details out there and that is what has generated the arguments. Let me quickly add that Anas Aremi Anas is a very well-known international investigative journalist. Even though he's a Ghanaian, he's done several work with Al Jazeera and with BBC and all that. And so his work is always treated with a lot of respect. However, in this incident, people think that he resorted to entrapment and also has refused to show the videos of people who passed the test that he set for them. Well, there have been, of course, varied reactions to this documentary, or rather this expose by Anas, and many have wondered if entrapment is actually the right term to, you know, make sure that this is described by. But let's talk about how this affects Ghana's, um, Ghana's profile publicly. We know that Ghana's currency has struggled in the past few months in 2022, and uh, Bloomberg had listed it as one of the worst leading currencies. Now, one of the issues or one of the ways out in which Ghana sought to d deal with this is seeking bailouts from the IMF to the tune of $3 million. How do you think that this expose affects Ghana's chances, especially because this also po points fingers at the Minister of State for Finance? Well, so it is quite dramatic, and that is because Charles Edubwai, who is the Minister of State at the Finance Ministry, together with the Finance Minister, Ken Ofriata, where the two people leading the discussions with the International Monetary Fund in order for Ghana to secure a program in the sum of about $3 billion. So to the extent that his appointment has had to be terminated just almost at the tail end of the discussions means that uh, it has a direct effect on the negotiations. However, we've been assured by government officials that even though he was engaged in the discussion, there are equally other two deputy finance ministers and the substantive finance minister himself who are well able to continue with these negotiations that are ongoing with the IMF. And so I can tell you that it has dealt a very heavy blow to the government and also to efforts made aimed at reviving the economy. Again, Charles Edubwahim, his father is the first presidential candidate of the ruling party now to have contested for elections in Ghana, and that was in 1992, his direct father. And so people within the New Patriotic Party have seen this as tragic because you are talking about the very foundation of a political party being attacked because when you have the first presidential candidate's son being caught up in such a challenge and being terminated out of office in this dramatic manner, some people have said that it doesn't speak well for the ruling new patriotic party. And so no matter how you look at it, looking at it from the finance perspective, there has been a heavy blow. And looking at it from the political perspective, there has also been a heavy blow. Meanwhile, the talk has been about the fact that this whole thing is entrapment and people are calling for a review of the modus operandi of Anas, Armia Anas, when it comes to what we all know as investigative journalism. And so those are the three things that I can talk about as far as this whole issue is concerned when it comes to the economic situation we find ourselves. All right. Well, thank you so much, Wilberforce, for breaking this, uh, breaking this down for us this morning. We look forward to get more insight. I'm sure the story will keep unfolding, being a developing story. We look forward to uh, tying with you again.
Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. All right.